This is a continuation of 2.5, which is solving inequalities. And I want to show you how to do that algebraically through something called an interval chart. In the last tutorial, what we did was we saw how to solve for inequalities using a graph. And you know what? I want to show you the exact same example, but instead of using a graph, I want to show you it through algebra. And I'll show you that I get the exact same answer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through these steps, but you know what, I, I really don't want to read the steps to you, I'd actually just like to show you the steps. So like I said, let's do the exact same example as the previous tutorial, but we're going to do it algebraically this time. You start with the same steps, you bring everything over to one side, we definitely need that equals zero on one side. Okay, so once it's all simplified, you're going to factor it, and then you're going to solve for each of your roots or your x-intercepts. So then, once we have all this information, in the previous example, we actually just graphed. So in this example, since we're doing it algebraically, we don't graph. We actually start to make a table. This guy right here is important. Okay, so notice that it's written again right here, just as a reminder. And we're going to put each of those pieces into the left-hand side, which is where the intervals go. So your x this bracket, and then this bracket. So we always separate them. All together, so here's a kind of like a, a together sign, everything together makes f at x. So this yellow part is f at x. Okay, now we also have our roots. So our roots are going to be 0, 3, and negative 1. Before, I had said it's very important to put these in order from smallest to largest, and you finally know why right now. So this line right here represents the smallest one, which is negative 1. Then this line represents the middle, which is 0. And then the next line represents 3, which is the largest. So we always go in ascending order. Because basically what we've done is, whatever our function is, we've broken it up into four sections. One from negative infinity all the way to negative 1. The second would be from negative 1 to 0. The third interval is from 0 to 3. And then the last interval is from 3 all the way to infinity. Okay, now these are square brackets, all of them, because you have this equal to sign at the bottom. So it's okay for it to equal to negative 1, and that's why we have those square brackets. You never put square brackets around the infinity though. Those are always round brackets. Now we're going to fill in the rest of our chart with pluses and minuses, and we do it like this. Take a number that is in between negative infinity and negative 1 maybe like a big number, like negative 10 or negative 100, and you're going to sub it into your x's. So if I sub negative 10 into here, our answer will be a negative. If I put negative 10 in here, negative 10 minus 3 will be a negative answer. Negative 10 plus 1 will still be a negative answer, therefore I get all negatives. Now to get my total, what I'm going to do is I would multiply all these. A negative multiplied with a negative multiplied with a negative is a negative. Let's try that again. So if we have a number in between negative 1 and 0, so I'm thinking negative half, okay, we're going to plug it in here and negative a half makes a negative number. Negative a half minus 3 is negative. Negative half plus 1, oh, actually that one's a positive. So when I multiply these symbols together, these two are going to make a positive with another positive makes a positive. So you just keep picking numbers that are in between these intervals and subbing them into here and then figuring out what the positives and negatives are going to be. Okay, so the final answer. What is less than or equal to zero? Anything that has a negative is going to be a less than or equal to zero. When it's greater than or equal to zero, then you're highlighting the red ones, sorry, not the red ones, the plus ones. Okay, so that means that this interval satisfies this statement. That's one of our answers. And then this interval is our second answer. And I'm pretty sure that matched our graph. Yes, it did. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's see a full example. Solve the following polynomial inequality graphically, and then verify your answer by solving the polynomial algebraically. Okay, so I didn't do it graphically. Again, for this tutorial, I just want to do it algebraically. And look, they've actually already put everything onto one side, so you have your zero. 
now all you have to do is factor this and actually it looks like it's going to be quite a bit of work because we might have to do some long division. Okay, so what I did was I started taking factors of 8, so I tried 1, and it actually worked, and I got a remainder of 0. So factor theorem says that x minus 1 must be a factor. So if this is one of the factors, like right here, I put it on the outside as a divisor, and I divided the dividend. So this guy right here is our quotient, and we're going to take our quotient, it goes right there, sorry, this one is my green, and now that it's a nice quadratic, I can easily break down the quotient into two factors, so this one and this one. You're going to solve each of your factors, and you're going to put them in order, because the order will help you to create your table. Okay, so remember, these guys, your negative 4, negative 2, and your 1, they go right here, here's negative 4, that's this line, negative 2, which is this line, and then positive 1, which is going to be this line. Everything has round brackets because there is no equal to sign underneath the inequality symbol. Now each of these factors goes on the left hand side, and then we do our total line. Okay, so take numbers in between each of these intervals and sub them into our x's. So for instance, like let's say this one something that's between 1 and positive infinity, like maybe 100. Take the 100 and put it in here. 100 minus 1 is a positive number. 100 plus 2 is a positive number, and 100 plus 4 is a positive number. So a positive times a positive times a positive will give you a positive. That's how you fill out the entire chart, and then you're going to answer the question. So when, when are we looking at that is greater than 0. That's going to be this part right here because it's a positive and this part right here and that's why these two intervals are going to be our answer. So one more tip, make sure that you put the, Z, the U in the middle for United and then you also need to put X belongs to because we're talking about X values here. Alright, so those are two different ways that you can solve inequalities. You can, all, you can always use um, this table or you could always use the graphing method.